Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, it's 5 a.m. I was going to go to bed, but then this popped up on Discord, and I figured, you know what? We we need to take a look at this because this 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 is very interesting. And 5 a.m. or not, in interesting things are in front of us. We they must be analyzed, or at least looked at and talked about and speculated. Because this is an AMD PCB with a VRM I've not seen before. More, a bit too many, too many power pins. And uh, yeah, um, anyway, so let's talk about what we see here. So first of all, we can clearly see that this is a GDDR uh, GPU. Is it GDDR6 or GDDR5? I don't know because uh, I don't feel like counting how many, actually this is probably six. That is a lot of pins. How much is that? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So five by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So by eighteen. Um I don't know what a GD wait, I'll just look up a like I'll just look up a GDDR6 package. GDDR6, Micron, come on Google, help me here. Uh-huh. Great, just give me the 8 gig part catalog, I don't care. Want to know what package it comes in? Why doesn't it say what packaging it comes in? Oh, there is a data sheet. Perfect. Man, I love Micron. Like they're like for a lot of the other memory vendors, you you can't get data sheets, but these guys, you you can get data sheets. Okay, come here. Cut. No, you stupid application. Get over here. I need to be able to read this garbage. What's well, hundred and eighty balls? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure GDDR5 wasn't on that many BGA pins. It doesn't make any sense to use GDDR5X, uh, so... Because that's old and irrelevant at this point, so... I'm just gonna grab an 8 gigabit piece of GDDR5 from Micron's part catalog again. Man, their data sheets are so useful. Okay, open that up. 170. Yeah. And I'm 99% certain that that has to be completely standardized for all GDDR5. So, okay. So we have a hundred and... So this is G6. That's that's G6 right there. Um, we can also at this point say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight memory chips. So that means we have a 256 bit wide memory bus. So that that's our memory bus width, frequency, who knows, but this alone already kind of gives us an idea of what kind of performance we can ballpark from this GPU. Um, for comparison's sake, uh, like, so, so let's just go 256 bit for NVIDIA at least, um, you're looking at a 2070 or a, or a 2080. Okay, that's that's what NVIDIA does with a 256-bit memory bus. Now, normally, AMD GPUs need way more memory bandwidth to get anywhere near the same performance level that NVIDIA does, um, which is why you have, like, a 500, you know, gigabyte per second Fiji um, going up against, like, a 300-ish gigabyte per second 980 Ti. Uh AMD's really bad about using all of their extra memory bandwidth or more la or the other option is they just whack a bunch of memory bandwidth on their on their GPUs for no good reason but so you know at like 256 bit memory bus th this already just kind of says like here's the thing it's 256 bit there is no way it's getting close to a 2080 Ti I'd be surprised if it like, well, I'd be, it would be nice if it matched a 2080, but that I think would be rather optimistic considering AMD's track record at this point. But I, I have other, other hopes here because, well, that's two 8-pin power connectors. So 
And, and you might be like, oh, but maybe the, the power connectors are unnecessary. But the thing is, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight phase VRM we're looking at right here. So yeah, and also this, this package right here, that is the new smart power stage package. Um, the last time an AMD GPU used that, a reference AMD GPU uses that package, those were 70 amps each. There's a good chance those are 70 amp smart power stages. Now, AMD does like to go pretty overkill on their, uh, on their VRMs, on their reference cards, but, like, this is a lot of VRM. It's less VRM than what you get on a Radeon 7, but it's still a lot of VRM. Though it is, like, it's still within the same range as a 2080 VRM, but NVIDIA's more recent cards, well, the the thing is the 2080 does, does the 2080 have? I don't remember. How many 8 pins does a 2080 have? Any? <laughs> Let's see. I assume it doesn't have... Yeah, no, an, a 2080 is an 8 pin and a 6 pin. So, okay, yeah, I, I would assume... Because that's an 8, and that's another 8. So, at this point, I'd say, looking at this VRM, looking at our power configuration, 250 to 300 watts. And 300 watts is the upper limit, because basically, if you go above 300 watts, your GPU is going to become a meme. And nobody's going to... And for that reason alone, nobody wants to really exceed 300 watts TDP. Okay, like, the, the just nobody's going to make a GPU with an advertised TDP higher than 300 watts because at that point, everybody's going to go like, look, it's the return of the GTX 480. Ha ha ha. And that's going to be the end of your GPU reviews. Like, your every review out there is going to bomb your card, regardless of how good a heatsink you're going to put on it. But speaking of the heatsink, you see these three holes right here? That's for a blower heat. That's for a blower fan. So the, if you've seen a, like a Founders Edition Vega or actually the Vega cards, um, they have these three holes in this lovely arrangement on their PCB. This is what the, the blower fan mounts to. So I really hope they don't ship this with a blower fan because this is way too many power connectors to trust AMD with a, a, a blower heat sink on this. It could also be a workstation card, but if if this is like if they do a gaming version of this, they better not run a freaking blower on it. Like no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay? Like for a gaming card, a blower heat sink if a, a, a 2 8 pin AMD gaming GPU with a blower heatsink is the last thing AMD needs to release. Okay, like, because it's, like, they've, ne even the freaking Radeon 7 doesn't exactly have, you know, in reviews, if you look at the actual decibel measurements, it's not amazing. Okay, the last thing we need is another RX 480 heatsink, or another Ray Vega heatsink, or like a regular Vega heatsink, not the Radeon 7 heatsink, but like a Vega 56 heatsink or a Vega 64 heatsink, or an, God forbid, an R9 290X heatsink, or a 7970 gigahertz edition heatsink, okay? So I really hope this is for workstations and not for gaming cards, because if this is for gaming cards, this thing is gonna fail because basically all the reviews that come out about this card are gonna be talking about, oh, it uses two eight pins and pulls way too much power and it's loud as shit. So yeah, I just, no, please no blower. Anyway, we do have an eight phase VRM. The VRM does look quite impressive, but that's just kind of concerning for our power power restrictions, though seriously, it's not like there's no way it's going to exceed 300 watts, but the fact that there's two 8 pins makes me very, you know, I would not expect it to be under 250 watts, because if it was under 250 watts, you wouldn't be putting two 8 pins on it, would you? Um, so, that's that's not great right off the bat. Other than that, we have some ran we have a voltage regulator up here, so we have a nice little VRM over there. Uh, we have another VRM that's... Like, there's a lot of VRMs on here. So we have another one over here. We have another one over there. These are all using that same 70, uh, smart power stage uh, package. Um, we have what looks like a voltage controller down here, but I can't see anything that's going to. This is just input filtering. So that just, there's like 12 volts is probably going to go into one side of that and then come out the other side somewhere else on the card. Um, go through that and uh, come out on some somewhere else on the card. So it's not super concerning right there, but uh, 
Yeah, we have a voltage controller up here. Um, so on the front of this card, I mean, we're, we're not really seeing anything super special, right? We know how many, we, we know this is going to have a 256-bit memory bus. It's probably going to be, almost certainly going to be GDDR6. I mean, at this point, GDDR5 is also kind of, like, yeah, it's cheap, but it's not exactly uh, fast. Um, so it's kind of irrelevant. Um, so at this point, I think it's safe to say, like, you know, so that that's what we know about this side of the card. Um, and if we go to the back, which uh, we have only this, I mean, here we don't really see anything. Well, we, we do see the vCore VRM controller. Um, looks like we have LED indicate like this looks like the LED, uh, part of the LED indication system that a lot of the, the newer AMD cards have for, for load indication. That's pretty cool. Um, plenty of output filtering. I mean, what else would you expect, right? Tons of capacitors over there. Interesting that they've just jammed the inductors on top of that. And like, there's no, uh, no, uh, output filtering capacitors on this side of the PCB, but still not a huge deal in that department. We have what looks like a ton of configuration switches. Um, those might be just for the engineering sample. Does, could this possibly have integrated RGB? No, please no. <laughs> um that that is a potential there, there is pot well that that is a lot of dip switches right there it could also be just for engineering sample cards but i'd assume there's better ways to implement that um well better ways to implement engineering sample features than you know a million dip switches on a pre-production board especially because th well these might actually be the final card well th they could just not populate them on the final cards it doesn't really affect anything so yeah that, that that right there is like well looks like there's going to be some interesting f th th that the the pcb has some interesting functions but they may or may not be enabled if this card ever hit reaches consumers we still don't know that right but i'm i'm going to assume that this this is this probably could this could be a navi right like it could be a navi i i can't really think of what else it would be at this point um but uh yeah, on the back, there's really not that much to see. At least from this very low resolution, blurry picture, right? There's not much there to see. So, yeah, the, the front of the card, though, like, please, like, th that blower mount right there is really concerning. Because the other thing that's concerning is, like, it would be fine if there was reference blower cards if on launch day we got cards with real heat sinks from the various add-in board partners, right? But with the last couple of cards that AMD launched, that hasn't been the case. Actually, even if you go as far back as the 290X, the 290X launched, and for a very good period of, for a very long period of time, your only option was to buy the freaking blower version which is not okay, okay? Like, that is not okay. It just nobody should be forced to use a blower heatsink 290X. Like, no. Um, anyway, and then the RX 480 was the same thing. Now, admittedly, the RX 480's blower wasn't as loud as what the 290X had, but it certainly wasn't what I would describe as quiet or good at cooling. Um, so, yeah, I, I really hope if... Like, if this this launches as a reference blower card, there better be custom cards day one, you know? And by custom cards, I mean just custom heat sinks. Day one. Just not, none, like, freaking... Because the thing is, is just like, there's... Well, blowers are just bad, okay? There, there's just no real... Um, I, like, you can have blower heat sinks, which are, like, surprisingly not terrible by blower heat sink standards, but if you compare them to real heat sinks, they're still just bad, always. Because um, trying to cram air through a heat sink, through the heat sink's smallest cross section, is just stupid, okay? Because if you want to move a lot of air without having to resort to very high air velocity, which high air velocity basically translates into a ton of noise, um because you get a bunch of turbulence, your best solution to it is to use a very large cross-section and a lower airspeed. That way you can get a lot of air volume without having to resort to a whole lot of airspeed which produces all the damn noise. So that's why blower heat sinks are inherently flawed. You're trying to cram air through the heat sink through the smallest cross-section of said heat sink. Never gonna work, like you can't make that quiet unless the heat sink is way larger than the, th like way overkill for what you're trying to cool. 
but I mean that that's just not going to happen here, right? Like we, we can already see that. Like the, realistically, that heatsink only ha can go from like there to there. Well, not even there because the fan has to go somewhere. So if the fan was like that size, that's your heatsink. That is anemic and loud, and I don't like they don't even need to finish it. That already looks anemic and loud. If if the fan is as large as it can possibly be, which actually it'd be encroaching on the eight pins there. But a small fan doesn't move a lot of air either, and then it has to spin fast, and that also makes a lot of noise. So, basically, you can't win. Don't build blowers. Um, yeah. Anyway, that that pretty much covers all of my thoughts on this. There's not really much there because. It, it is, you know, just, just a bare PCB with no, absolutely nothing on it. And it's a bare PCB at quite possibly, well, I mean, it, it could be blurrier, but I, if it was any blurrier, I, I would, wouldn't would even consider, you know, talking about it because there wouldn't be anything to see. Um, so, yeah, but still, that that's just kind of my thoughts on, on this... Uh, on this PCB that popped up on, on, on Discord at 5 in the freaking morning. So, I might be even less coherent than usual, but th there. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, uh, suggestions down in the comment section below. And uh, if you'd like to support what I do here with Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon. I also have Teespring with uh, things like shirts and socks and posters and stickers. Um, and those, like, both Patreon and Teespring do help out with running the channel immensely. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you, you know, kindly check the links to, check out the links to those down in the description below, that would be awesome. And that's it for the video, so I'm gonna hit the stop button. Where is it? There it is.